President Trump was hoping to eliminate the death tax. But the Senate got in the way. A new study demonstrates how the chamber's halfway measure is still costing jobs and the stability of companies. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. Economist Anthony Davis produced the study in cooperation with the American Business Defense Foundation. Dick Patton, president of the ABDF, is with us today to highlight some of the key points. Dick, it's nice to have you on the program again. Hey, Steve. Thanks for inviting me. Let's start at the beginning. For those who haven't heard of the death tax, what is it? The death tax is the tax against the entire estate, which is you know everything a person owns at the time that they die. It is destructive to family businesses, family farms, family ranches. Right. Could you explain what the Senate did that compromised the effectiveness of the intended reform? Absolutely. In the 2017 Tax Reform Act that took place at the end of last year, it was launched from the White House, and President Trump announced that we're going to repeal the estate tax, kill the death tax. After it was launched out of the White House, it went to the House of Representatives, particularly in the Ways and Means Committee, and the Tax Reform Act that was passed through the House uh, included complete and permanent repeal of the estate tax. It then went on to the Senate, and in the Senate, there were two Republicans who refused to go along unless they kept the death tax in place. So the Senate then passed a version that took the exemption at the time, which is $5.5 million, doubled it to $11 million until 2025, and that's what they passed. How many jobs does this type of employer that's affected by the death tax provide? First of all, let's talk about all the family businesses in America who provide 49 million jobs in the American economy. The families that still pay death taxes with the $11 million exemption, and there are about 36,000 of them, they provide 32.1 million jobs throughout America. That's two-thirds of all the jobs provided by family businesses in the nation. And uh, I really want to get into this next point. If we could talk about the different levels of harm, we'll start off with the current owners of such a business. How does the tax affect them? Instead of growing, they're setting aside the money that's going to pay for the death tax whenever it happens. Now, let's say if you have a business of any size that, that has more than $11 million in assets, then you have to be prepared to pay the government 40% of the value of all of that uh, within less than a year. That's unbelievable. Let's turn now, if we can, to the uh, heirs of the current owners. How would they be affected in the future? Let's say, for example, if you happen to be a tree farmer, you're a forest landowner, and your crop is trees. Okay. Like maybe Christmas trees or something like that? They could be Christmas trees, but in most cases, they're for bigger projects than that. They're for lumber. They're for paper. But if you are in the tree farming business, your crop takes 25 years to grow to to full size and to be ready for harvesting. What the IRS does is they will come in and they'll first of all assess the land on what they call the highest and best use. Now that means, you know, if you were to clear cut your land and build a resort or, or a ski resort or a hunting lodge or something like that and make more money, if you're anywhere near a town, then the value of the land, of course, is going up. And then the IRS begins to count board feet on all of your trees that are growing, whether they are ready for harvesting or not, and assigning a price to that. And all of that goes into their death tax bill. And then they have to come up with the cash, again, in, you know, in less than a year. What we do know, this has been studied by the industry and actually by the University of Georgia, that every single year, 2.4 million acres of forest land is clear-cut to come up with death tax cash. Wow. And God forbid that a member of the second generation should die shortly after that. We'd go through the whole process again? 
give you one example. I know of two brothers in West Texas who are living on a ranch that was established by their family in the 1880s, been in their family for about five generations. You know, they grew up with the dream of we will both raise our families on the ranch and run the ranch and the life we want. But unfortunately, grandma died, and of course they had to come up with the death tax. Four years later, their father died. So they're paying a double dose of death taxes. As a result, one of those brothers had to leave the farm, take a job in town, and his earnings on that job basically are devoted to paying the double death duties on the family ranch to try to keep it alive. That's just unbelievable. We've talked about the owners. Of course, most people out there are employees. What about the employees of an affected family business? How does this affect them? Let me give you an example, because this is an example that is happening right now. A high-tech manufacturing company in Seattle, they provide about 1,000 high-tech manufacturing jobs in the state of Washington, Oregon, and in North Carolina. And you've got Dad, who bought the business originally in 1962, and he's got four sons, and all four sons are involved in the business. And Dad is in his mid-70s, and his health is a little bit questionable, but, you know, they all have to anticipate, okay, so what are we going to do? Their estimate is that they will have to come up with $39 million to pay for the death tax when Dad dies. And they're not sitting on bags of money. Everything that they have has been invested in this high-tech manufacturing company with very expensive technology and equipment and buildings, and they're in multiple states, and they've been growing. And, of course, that's where your profits go. And so they actually have a buyer at the table right now who is willing to give them full price for the business. He has to recover his investment as well. And so his plan is to take all the technology and the equipment, ship it to Indonesia, set up the manufacturing plant over there because he's got very, very, very cheap labor. But meanwhile, there are a thousand jobs that have lost and families that depend on those paychecks. Right. Dick, do you have any estimate of the total number of jobs the current version of the death tax is costing us now? Nobody has really invested or asked the question, so what does this mean and quantified authoritatively until this study that we're just releasing? And so the question is, in the next 25 years, how many jobs will be lost if the death tax stays where it is right now? And the answer to that is 11.6 million jobs. Wow. Of course, we're just a few weeks from the midterm election. So could you tell us uh, names of some House and Senate candidates who are the most committed to eliminating this tax? 262 candidates for House and Senate have signed the death tax repeal pledge. Wow. It should be interesting to see what happens in a few weeks. Well, obviously, this is a very complicated topic. We try to hit some of the high points. Anything else you'd like to share? You know, I think if you take all of the arguments about the estate tax on both sides, and you could boil it down to a single question. And that question would be, do we actually have property rights or are we merely taxpaying serfs who after a lifetime of hard work and paying our taxes, you know, when we die, does our land, does our property revert to the Lord on the castle on the hill? So capitalism versus feudalism, that's an interesting way to put it. Dick, I'd like to thank you for uh, visiting with us today. You certainly gave us a lot to think about. Well, Steve, I enjoyed chatting with you, and um, I hope you found this useful. Dick Patton is president of the American Business Defense Foundation. You can learn more by checking out its website, businessdefense.net. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till you hear this. Discover more stories like this one on our website. Wait till you hear this.com.